Hello and welcome to a discussion of 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. I first encountered this book in the Reader's Digest probably sometime in the 1970s. That was when they used to include abridged books at the end of each magazine. I don't know if 84 Charing Cross Road was abridged because the entire book only takes about an hour to read as it is a series of letters between Helene Hamp living in New York and the second-hand and antiquarian bookshop Marks & Company which was situated at 84 Charing Cross Road in London. At some stage I acquired a copy of it and read it again. I lost that copy when I emigrated to South Africa and took my library with me. After five years I returned to the UK minus my library. Now I have restocked my library and I have another copy of 84 Charing Cross Road together with the Duchess of Bloomsbury Street. I know Charing Cross Road very well having lived in London as a, teenage, a teenager in the 1960s and I often frequented the bookshops that lined that street. Here is Helene Hamp's description from the Duchess of Bloomsbury Street. Charing Cross Road is a narrow honky-tonk street choked with traffic lined with second-hand bookshops. The open stalls in front were piled with old books and magazines. Here and there a peaceful soul was browsing in the misty rain. Any book lover who reads 84 Charing Cross Road will immediately recognise a kindred spirit. Here is a quote from her letter dated December the 8th 1949. I was then nearly three years old, but Helene knew my preferences even then. I do love second-hand books that open to the page some previous owner read oftenest. The day Hazlitt came, he opened to, I hate to read new books, and I hollered, Comrade, to whoever owned it before me. I love her assessment of Keats and Shelley. She wrote on March the 25th, 1950, I require a book of love poems with spring coming on. No Keats or Shelley, send me poets who can make love without slobbering. A damning assessment and a hugely enjoyable one. On October the 15th, 1951, she wrote to Marks and Company to complain about the copy of Pepys's diary they sent to her. Where is January 1688 where his wife chased him out of bed and round the bedroom with a red hot poker? Which is a brilliant improvement of Pepys's original entry. Pepys wrote, about one o'clock she came to my side of the bed and drew my curtain open and with the tongs red hot at the ends made as if she designed to pinch me with them. At which, in dismay, I rose up and, with a few words, she laid them down. I think Helene's version is much more dramatic and exciting. It was from Helene Hamp that I learned that it was okay to throw out books that I'm never going to read again. On September the 18th, 1952, she wrote, I house clean my books every spring and throw out those I'm never going to read again like I throw out clothes I'm never going to wear again. It shocks everybody. My friends are peculiar about books. They read all the best sellers. They get through them as fast as possible. I think they skip a lot and they never read anything a second time so they don't remember a word of it a year later but they are profoundly shocked to see me drop a book in the waste basket or give it away. The way they look at it, you buy a book, you read it, you put it on the shelf, you never open it again for the rest of your life. You don't throw it out, not if it has a hard cover on it. Why not? I personally can't think of anything less sacrosanct than a bad book or even a mediocre one. My rating for this book 
is A, because Helene will not be happy if I never read it again. And now, here's a quick recap, and I'll be back soon with another BookTube video.